Good morning. I can't stand up there, so I have to come down front a little bit. Um, what we're doing today is every Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, the pastor is up here delivering the sermons, and he's talking to us while his family sits there. So a couple times on Sundays, we are going to give him the opportunity to sit with his family and view church as we do sitting there. So in the gospel reading this morning, the end, the last words, you cannot serve God and wealth, that grabbed my attention. And I was trying to figure out the complexity of what that statement means. So in trying to figure that out, I broke it down into three things, God, wealth, and serving. So we all know what wealth is. Wealth is your possessions. Wealth is what you have, be it money, being it material things, or whatever you consider with your material items. We know God is the eternal being, and we also understand serving. We serve God. We worship God. The first commandment says that we shall have one God. We shall have no other God before him. In Matthew, Matthew also says that you shall, have, you shall not serve two masters, and God shall be your only God, and you shall serve him only. So clearly we are being told that we should worship God and not wealth. When Jesus came down uh, to the fishermen, told them to drop his nets, drop their nets, and to follow him. In doing so, fishermen dropped their nets right away. And they followed him. But not only did they drop their nets, they, dropped, they left their livelihood. That was how they lived. And in doing so, once they did that, they left the security of their homes. They left their families. There was no hesitation whatsoever when he called, they went. So, we are clearly following Jesus in that, where we worship Jesus. But, my question is, have anybody here, has we all put our material things ahead of Jesus? We know we worship him. We know we don't worship our wealth. But has there ever been a time when your material things have come ahead of Jesus. And a few years back, I would teach the Sunday school class, the high school group. And we had a very casual hour morning before church. And these kids were extremely intelligent. They were really, it was a good group to be with. So I posed them. We were talking, we had this same discussion about having wealth and about Jesus. So I had them in their minds, I said, Tell me what is your most favorite possession. What do you have that is above everything else at your house? And they didn't have to tell me, and they thought about it. So we had four or five of us sitting around the table, and I said, put it on the table, and I looked at each one, and they told me what it was. And a minute later, I had them stand up. And they looked, and I said, over the door, here's Jesus. He wants us to go now. Leave your things and go. There was a hesitation. They looked down. They looked at the table like, I have to leave this. For one moment, the possessions were ahead of Jesus. So, we can argue the fact that these were teenagers, that adults don't act like that. Okay, Picture this, if you will. Pastor Mike. Now, we all know that Pastor Mike is an avid bicyclist. He strives to ride every year in his 150 MS bike ride. So for 15 months, the pastor's been building a bicycle. Newest of tires. Nicest gears. Best handlebars. He's putting it together himself. He's got it painted black. 
The handlebars are white to match his collar. He's ready to go. He gets that bicycle done. Hollers up to Stacy. Stacy, I'm going for a bike ride. I'm gonna call up Greg, see if he's home. Now, with the pastor, a bike ride isn't down from his house three laps around the church parking lot and back to his house. When the pastor takes a ride, he's going down to Heinz Field, get a hot dog and drive back. Okay, I've ridden with the pastor. I can't keep up with him. I know what his rides are like. So he's getting all ready. He's getting his helmet on, getting his gloves on. All of a sudden, he's in the garage. All of a sudden, you hear, Michael. Pastor's like, what's that? He keeps going. Got his horn so he can pass people. He's all ready to go. Michael. Again, it calls. Leave me alone. I don't have to do the sermon today. It's already done. Jeff's doing it. He's got it covered. Michael, it's time to go. For that one instant, I I didn't ride it yet. The knobs are still on the tires. For that one instant, that one second, the pastor gave the same hesitation that the high school kids gave me when I said, Jesus is at the side door, it's time to go. We all have a bicycle. We all have something that is dear to us. Whether it's material, whether it's the reason, our hesitation. And I say this because six days of the week, our lives are consumed with what we do at home. Our lives are running here, getting up, going there, getting this, buying that. Sunday, we come to church. Sunday, we sit here, we worship God. We leave church, we go back to the same rat race that we've left for the first six days of the week. Now, I remember back in the day, Sunday morning, what did you do? You got up Sunday morning, you went to Sunday school. After Sunday school, you went to church. After church, where did you go? Went to grandma's house. We had a Sunday dinner. There were no stores open. There were no sports. There were no activities that took us away from our families, that took us away from starting our day here at church. Now we're fighting that seven days a week. So all of us with our bicycles, we need to put those aside, and we need to make Jesus first again seven days of the week. Because remember, he died for us on the cross. Amen.